Hello everyone, I am Priyanka Wilson and welcome to GS course series of decoding the UPSC preparation with macro topic detailing. The topic of science and technology is located in general studies paper 1 of prelims examination under the header general science and general studies paper 3 of UPSC mains examination. Science and technology in mains covers areas of IT, cyberspace, robotics, etc. In the following video, Raj Vardhan sir will discuss the macro detailing of science and technology syllabus and link previous year portions with them to give you a clarity. So guys, if you like this video, so please like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to GS Code. This is Syllabus Explained series. And today we'll be discussing syllabus of science and technology. Science and technology, as we know, is an important subject for both prelims and mains. But especially, it is more important for the prelims examination because the number of questions that UPC have started asking from science and uh, technology are more in prelims examination. And that's why its weightage is a bit more in prelims compared to uh, mains examination right so in this session we'll be discussing about the syllabus of uh, science and technology for both prelims as well as mains and also we'll try to decode the uh, syllabus because often uh, the topics mentioned under science and technology they have mentioned only the headings what exactly we are supposed to study under that we'll be discussing that and also we'll try to uh, discuss previous year questions from science and technology as well Right. So, let us start with this video. Firstly, we will we'll see the syllabus that UPC has given for prelims and mains examination as far as science and technology is concerned. Firstly, prelims syllabus. So, in prelims, they have mentioned about general science, right? General science, that means physics, chemistry, and biology right so these are three topics under general science physics chemistry and biology but if we see previous year questions then often we'll find that questions are not related to physics chemistry uh, or biology rather they are related to various kinds of technologies which have been mentioned by upsc in the main syllabus so, from where questions are coming on those topics in the prelims examination? Questions are coming on another heading under prelims syllabus and that is current developments. Current developments of national and international importance. Of national and international importance. For example, this year, uh, in this year's prelims, they have asked question on web 3.0. So, web 3.0, we can easily put under this particular topic, web 3.0. Then, there was a question on fractional orbital bombardment system, FOBS. So, that question again is related to current developments. Then, questions like Non fungible tokens NFT, DNA barcoding, DNA barcoding. All these questions we can put under current development topics. But at the same time, there are some questions that are general science related questions. But again, for those questions, inspiration is current affairs. For example, there was a question from biology and that question was related to B cells and T cells, right? Question was related to B cells and T cells. So, B cells and T cells were in use in the context of vaccination, right? So, uh, that is why we can say that though questions are asked from physics, chemistry and biology, often their inspiration is in current developments, right? So, that is what is mentioned in the prelim syllabus general science in which we are supposed to study physics chemistry and biology and then current developments of national and international importance now if we discuss 
the main syllabus then uh, main syllabus is quite quite extensive syllabus that upsc has given compared to the prelim syllabus so what they have mentioned in the main science and technology developments and their applications and effects in everyday life right so developments related to science and technology which have their application and effects uh, on our everyday life such topics become important as per this uh, this topic mentioned in the syllabus for example if there is a development related to let's say irnss indian regional navigation satellite system then that development related to science and technology has its applications and impacts on our everyday life and that's why that becomes important from the exams perspective right so those science and technology related developments which have their impact on our everyday life are important second achievements of indians in science and technology so this topic this topic they have mentioned in the syllabus is is primarily uh, asked in the mains examination where they ask about different indian scientists and their contributions in the field of science and technology for example uh, recently the questions uh, asked on this topic were related to uh, uh, m uh, sir m vishveshwaraya and also dr m s swaminathan right so uh, these are the personalities on which questions were asked from achievements of indians in the field of science and technology then next topic is indigenization of technology and developing new technology right so indigenization of technology we can say that it is related to defense technology defense technology right in syllabus they have not used the word defense technology but we can infer that word from indigenization of technology right so that is the second topic of the main syllabus third topic is awareness in the fields of it space computers robotics nanotechnology biotechnology and finally issues relating to intellectual property rights right so firstly uh, one should be aware of various technologies in the field of science and technology like information technology space technology nanotechnology biotechnology robotics right so all those technologies which are important in the field of science and technology one should be aware of those technologies developments occurring in those uh, technologies as well and then last topic is issues relating relating to intellectual property rights what are the issues relating to intellectual property rights those issues become important from the exams perspective right so uh, this is the syllabus of mains and earlier we have discussed syllabus of prelims examination now let us try to decode these different topics mentioned by upsc uh, in their syllabus that means prelims as well as mains syllabus so let us discuss the topics so firstly we'll be discussing about space technology right so what we are supposed to study under space technology if we go through previous year questions then under space technology we should study orbits orbits that means the imaginary paths followed by different celestial bodies are orbits so primarily uh, the orbits related to earth geocentric orbits are important from the exams perspective orbits like low earth orbit medium earth orbit geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit these orbits along with polar orbit uh, sun synchronous polar orbit are important from the exams perspective because if we understand these orbits then we'll be able to understand why a particular uh, satellite is launched in a certain orbit only right so that's why study of orbits is important secondly we should also study about launch vehicles launch vehicles are kind are a kind of vehicles which are used to take satellites from earth surface to various orbits in space right 
and uh, launch vehicles of India are important from the exams perspective. For example, uh, two most important launch vehicles of uh, of ISRO that is PSLV Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle and GSLV that is Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle. These two satellite launch vehicles are important for, uh, for, for from the exams perspective and also uh, small satellite launch vehicles are important, right? So such kind of launch vehicles, what kind of fuel uh, you, is used in these launch vehicles? What are the stages of these launch vehicles? What are different variants of these launch vehicles? All those topics become important here, right? Then satellites. After launch vehicles, we should be aware of different types of satellites. Satellites can be classified into number of types based upon their applications. For example, satellites can be remote sensing satellites, satellites can be navigation satellites, then satellites can also be telecommunication satellites. And finally, based upon application, we can have one more type of satellite and that is space exploration satellite. Right. So these four different types of satellites based upon their application are important from the exams perspective because UPC has asked many questions on these uh, different types of satellites. For example, they have asked question on Mars orbiter mission that is Mangalyan mission. Right. Uh, they have asked question on Astrosat. So these satellites become important from the exams perspective. And then last topic is recent missions recent missions of of isro nasa then china national space administration cnsa and any other space organization which has launched a uh, innovative satellite that also becomes uh, important from the exams perspective right so satellites primarily launched by isro are the most important followed by uh, missions of NASA as well, right? So these are the different topics that we should study under space technology. Now let us check the previous year questions asked from space technology topic. So space technology has remained favorite topic of UPSC and they have asked many questions in both prelims as well as mains examination. So firstly mains questions related to space technology. First, it was asked in 2019, what is India's plan to have its own space station and how will it benefit our space program, right? So this was asked in 2019 when there was quite, uh, quite a buzz around Chandrayaan 2. When Chandrayaan 2 was in news, UPSC asked question on space station of India which will be launched after five to six years of Gaganyaan mission. That means, let's say Gaganyaan is completed by 2023-24, uh, then by 2030, we will have our own space station. And UPC asked question on that space station in 2019 itself, right? So that is the first topic. Next, second question. India has achieved remarkable success in unmanned space missions including Chandrayaan and Mars orbiter mission but has not ventured into manned space missions. What are the main obstacles to launching a manned space mission both in terms of technology and logistics? So this was the question that UPC asked before initiation of Gaganyaan mission. And this was the question of 2017 mains examination, right? Why India is not able to launch manned mission was the question asked by UPSC in 2017, right? So these are some mains questions on space technology. Uh, now prelims question. In which one, uh, in which of the following areas can GPS technology be used? Right, so application of GPS technology. So it can be used in mobile phone operations, in banking operations, in controlling the power grids as well. So all these are the applications of GPS technology. Right, so mostly in prelims examination, UPC has asked questions 
uh, which are application based questions that means what is the application of certain technology uh, we have to select correct applications of certain technology from the statements given below right so this is one of such uh, question asked by upsc on space technology next we'll be discussing about defense technology so as we have already mentioned defense technology though not exclusively mentioned in the syllabus we can infer it from indigenization of technology which is uh, the topic mentioned in the main syllabus so what are the different topics that we'll be discussing under space uh, sorry defense technology firstly we'll be discussing about missiles right missiles both ballistic as well as cruise missiles ballistic as well as cruise missiles and also and also anti ballistic missiles or anti missile systems anti missile systems right so these topics will be discussing under ballistic missiles then aircraft carriers aircraft carriers which are sea going air bases like ins vikramaditya right so such aircraft carriers we will be discussing under defense technology then submarines there are different types of submarines for example there are nuclear powered submarines and there are diesel electric powered submarines so such kind of submarines and also ssbn and ssn submarines will be discussing under this topic then fighter aircrafts especially those fighter aircrafts which are in you which are in use for example uh, the uh, the rafael aircraft then uh, lca light combat aircraft and its different variants will be discussing here and then we'll be discussing about uavs unmanned aerial vehicles which are also known as drones right so these are the different topics that we'll be discussing under defense technology now questions asked from defense technology so uh, recently in 2021's mains exam there was a question asked on uh, defense technology and the question was how is s400 air defense system technically superior to any other system presently available in the world right so this was 2021's question uh, on s400 right so what are the advantages of s400 over other anti missile systems that was the question right next next topic that we'll be discussing is nuclear technology nuclear technology so uh, what exactly we are going to study under nuclear technology firstly we'll talk about nuclear science where we'll be discussing basics of uh, nuclear science what is nucleus what is uh, what is uh, what are different subatomic particles what is nuclear binding energy what is radioactivity what is uh, what are isotopes such basic topics we'll be discussing under nuclear science then we'll be discussing about nuclear reactions two very important nuclear reactions like nuclear fission reaction and second nuclear fusion reaction right so these reactions will be discussing then we'll be discussing about nuclear reactors where nuclear fission reaction is carried out in a controlled manner to produce nuclear energy right right now we are not using nuclear fusion energy fusion reaction and uh, reaction why because it is very difficult to develop the uh, the complex environment needed for nuclear fusion reaction to occur right and currently there is experiment going on uh, with respect to nuclear fusion reaction and that experiment is iter international thermonuclear experimental reactor so that also will be discussing under the uh, nuclear fusion reaction right so various nuclear reactors various different types of nuclear reactors are there primarily uh, pressurized heavy water reactor fast breeder reactor such different reactors will be discussing what are their advantages uh, which are the reactors used in indian nuclear energy program that also will be discussing under this topic then there are various applications of nuclear technology 
apart from energy generation it has its applications in medical field in agriculture field in space technology also in uh, in getting cleaner sources of energy we can use nuclear technology so those applications will be discussing here and lastly apart from the technology related aspects of nuclear technology we should also discuss about the diplomatic aspects of nuclear technology where primarily our focus will be on multilateral export control regimes like nuclear suppliers group wassenaar arrangement mtcr missile technology control regime and australia group so such different types of export control regimes will be discussing where primarily our focus will be on nuclear suppliers group because this is the export control regime of which india is not a member right so these are the different topics under nuclear technology then there are some questions asked by upsc on nuclear technology for example first question uh, is from 2017 give an account of the growth and development of nuclear science and technology in india what is the advantage of the fast breeder reactor program in india right so we have to trace the development of nuclear science and technology since the time of dr homi jahangir baba when he came up with indian nuclear program right and what is the uh, current status of indian nuclear program that we are supposed to discuss in the first part of the question and in the second part we are supposed to discuss the advantages of fast breeder reactor program uh, in india right so that is first question question number 2 with growing energy needs should india keep on expanding its nuclear energy program discuss the facts and fears associated with nuclear energy right so they have uh, they have asked question wherein we are supposed to take stand uh, take stand on uh, should we continue our exploration of nuclear energy right so that uh, is what asked in the first part and in the second part they have asked about the uh, facts and fears associated with nuclear energy what are the facts what are the advantages related to nuclear energy and secondly what are the fears related to nuclear energy right so that is what they have asked in 2018's mains examination now the next topic is information technology information technology under information technology what will be discussing will be discussing about the important aspects of supercomputers then different uh, different supercomputers developed in india Uh, national supercomputing mission then quantum computing quantum computing where our focus will be on different properties exhibited by qubits which allows quantum computing then uh, computer networks both wired as well as wireless networks wired and wireless under wired our focus will be primarily on optic fiber cables optic fiber cables and under wireless we'll talk about wifi bluetooth wimax then rfid rfid nfc near field communication lifi etc right so these are the topics that we'll be discussing under computer networks both wired and wireless then we'll be discussing about important frontier technologies like like internet of things iot then blockchain technology blockchain technology then then virtual reality and augmented reality right so such frontier technologies along with 3d printing 3d printing such topics will be discussing under frontier technologies right so these are the topics from information technology now let us discuss questions related to information technology so primarily questions on information technology have been asked by upsc in uh, mains uh, in prelims examination so this was the question that they have asked in 2018's prelims examination 
where they have given a scenario uh, which is related to internet of things right suppose uh, when the alarm of your smartphone rings in the morning you wake up and take it to stop the alarm and tap it to stop the alarm which causes your geezer to be switched on automatically the smart mirror in your bathroom shows the day's weather and also indicates the level of water in your overhead tank after you take some groceries from your refrigerator for making breakfast it recognizes the shortage of stock in it and places an order to the uh, for the supply of fresh grocery items when you step out of your house and lock the door all lights fans geysers and acs uh, get switched off automatically on your way to office your car warns you about traffic congestion ahead and suggest an alternative route and if you are late for a meeting it sends a message to your office accordingly right so this is the uh, scenario that they have given and we are supposed to identify the technology mentioned in the scenario so the technology is internet of things so most often uh, mostly the questions that upsc has asked from information technology are uh, are in the prelims examination one more question is there the recent questions uh, question of 2021 with reference to web 3.0 consider the following statements web 3.0 technology enables people to control their own data right so that is the advantage of web 3.0 next in web 3.0 Uh, in web 3.0 world there can be blockchain based social networks right so that is also the possibility third web 3.0 is operated by users collectively rather than a co uh, corporation right so all these statements are correct statements and that's why answer is d right so this was the latest question asked by upsc from information technology on web 3.0 next next we'll be discussing a topic called as robotics where we'll discuss basics of robots what are the different approaches to develop robots then what are the applications of robots in which fields we can use robots then uh, the most important topic under robotics that is artificial intelligence right where we'll be uh, discussing the concept of artificial intelligence then Uh, there are various advantages of artificial intelligence there are disadvantages as well of ai those advantages and disadvantages we'll discuss and then we'll also talk about the application of ai in various fields especially in the context of india right and after that we'll also discuss about machine learning and deep learning so that is what we'll be discussing under robotics topics next so questions now questions on robotics so uh, this question was asked by upsc in prelims examination on ai with the present state of development ai can effectively do which of the following again application based question applications of ai right so first is bring down electricity consumption in industrial units by improving efficiency of the machines it can bring down uh, the energy consumption second create meaningful stories and songs yes that is possible with machine learning and deep learning then disease diagnosis yes that is one of the important aspects which niti aayog is also focusing on uh, where we can use ai enabled machines in the Uh, in the uh, primary health centers to carry out the diagnosis of diseases text to speech conversion that is also an application and finally wireless transmission of electrical energy so we can use uh, ai in the devices carrying out wireless transmission of electrical energy so all these are the applications of ai uh, ai based machines next next topic is nanotechnology a very favorite topic of upsc because if you uh, see previous year questions in 2022's prelims examination they have asked a question on nanotechnology also they have asked question on uh, nanotechnology in mains examination as well so what exactly we'll be discussing under nanotechnology firstly we'll try to understand nanoscience 
where we'll focus on why exactly these nano materials or nanoparticles exhibit different properties than their uh, normal size counterparts. So that is the focus of nanoscience. Then uh, various properties of nanomaterials. There are different properties of nanomaterials. For example, gold at nanoscale exhibits different color. It may uh, it appears uh, red or purple at nano size, that, uh, and we know that at normal size it is yellowish in color or golden in color. But that is not the case at nano scale. Then uh, copper it becomes transparent at nano scale, which is not the case with normal sized uh, copper. Right. So, all such uh, properties exhibited by nanomaterials will be discussing. Then uh, structure of nanomaterials because this uh, has remained an important aspect on which UPC has asked question. For example, uh, carbon nanotubes, UPC has asked question on carbon nanotubes in 2020's uh, prelims examination. Then uh, they have asked question on fullerenes as well, which is another structure of nanomaterials. Right. And then applications, applications primarily in the field of medicine and agriculture because UPC has focused on these two aspects related to the applications of nanotechnology. Now let us discuss questions as well asked by UPC in, uh, in mains on nanotechnology. Okay, so questions asked by UPSC on nanotechnology. In 2020's mains, uh, there was a question and the question is, what do you understand by nanotechnology and how is it helping in health sector? Right, so uh, application of nanotechnology in health sector uh, was the focus of 2020's mains question. Then in 2016, again, there was a question. Why is nanotechnology one of the key technologies of the 21st century? Describe the salient features of Indian government's mission on nanoscience and technology and the scope of its application in the development process of the country. Right. So, three parts are there. Firstly, why nanotechnology is a technology of 21st century. Then, Describe the salient features of Indian government's mission on nanoscience and technology and uh, its scope of application in the development process of country. So, these three parts are there in this particular question. So, these are the questions asked by UPSC uh, in mains examination. Also, they have focused on nanotechnology in prelims exam as well. For example, in 2022's prelims, there was a question on nanotechnology. Consider the following statements. First, other than those made by humans, nanoparticles do not exist in nature. So, that is not the case because nanoparticles do exist in nature. Various viruses have na nano size and that is why nanoparticles do exist in nature. Second, nanoparticles of some metallic oxides are used in the manufacturing of some cosmetics, right? So, we know that in sunscreen lotions, we are using nano uh, materials of silver. Third, nanoparticles of some commercial products which enter environment are unsafe for humans, right? So, uh, these two statements are correct related to the question asked and that is why answer is D, 2 and 3 only, right? So, this was the question of 2022's prelims exam. Next, biotechnology. Again, a favorite topic of UPSC, biotechnology. So, what we will be discussing under biotechnology? Firstly, we will discuss about the basics of cells, chromosomes, DNAs, uh, genes, 
so that we can understand the different concepts uh, in uh, uh, or concepts under biotechnology chapter then we'll be discussing about genetic engineering the modern form of biotechnology where we can alter different genes of human beings as well as other organisms to come up with such products which are useful for uh, for human beings for example uh, we can come up with uh, genetically modified crops with the help of genetic engineering right then uh, stem cell therapy stem cell therapy where we can use stem cells to cure various kinds of diseases then applications of biotechnology there are very, uh, there are number of fields where we can use biotechnology for example in medical sector we can use biotechnology in agriculture sector we can use biotechnology in energy sector in energy sector then to reduce environmental pollution to address environmental pollution and issues related to environmental pollution we can use biotechnology right so these are the applications of biotechnologies but apart from applications there are many threats related to biotechnology because biotechnology if not regulated can be harmful because we can design babies using biotechnology and that's why there is a need to regulate this technology so that the threats associated with biotechnology we can reduce or minimize so these are the different topics that we'll be discussing under biotechnology then questions that upsc ha has asked on biotechnology are from both prelims and mains firstly mains question what are the research and developmental achievements in applied biotechnology what are the research and developmental uh, achievements in applied biotechnology how will these achievements help to uplift poorer sections of the society right so application of biotechnology to uplift poorer sections of society how we can uh, we can use genetically modified crops to uh, increase the production of food and that way how we can uh, make available food to the poorer sections of society how we can reduce the cost associated with various uh, various treatments again which will have positive impact on the poorer sections of the society right so that is the question uh, then in 2017 there was a question on stem cells stem cell therapy is gaining popularity in india to treat a wide variety of medical conditions including leukemia thalassemia damaged cornea and several burn and severe burns describe briefly what stem cell therapy is and what are uh, what advantages it has over other treatments right so that is the question that upsc asked in 2017's mains examination also there are questions from biotechnology in prelims as well or a few more questions on biotechnology in the mains exam question is from 2020's mains exam covid-19 pandemic has caused unprecedented devastation worldwide however technological advancements are being availed readily to win over the uh, to win over the crisis give an account of how technology was sought to aid management of the pandemic right so right from diagnosis to vaccine development we can write about the use of biotechnology especially to handle covid-19 pandemic then uh, in 2019 there was a question how can biotechnology help to improve the living standards of farmers right so application of biotechnology in the field of agriculture was the focus now questions on biotechnology from prelims examination first question consider the following statements dna barcoding can be a tool to first assess the age of a plant or animal second distinguish among species that look like look alike third identify undesirable animal or plant materials in processed foods right so uh, we can 
uh, identify or we can distinguish uh, species amongst the uh, amongst the lookalike species and also we can identify undesirable animal or plant material from a processed food and that's why answer is 2 and 3 only right so that was the question asked by upsc in 2022's prelims examination one more question from from uh, 2021's exam with reference to recent developments regarding recombinant vector vaccines consider the following statements first genetic engineering is applied in the development of these vaccines right correct statement second bacteria and viruses are used as vectors so this is also a correct statement related to recombinant vector vaccine so both these statements are correct and hence answer is c right so such questions are asked by upsc in the uh, in the prelims examination on biotechnology chapter then next topic that we'll be discussing in science and technology is contribution of indian scientists in various fields of science and technology and uh, here we will be focusing on different indian scientists and their achievements in different sectors for example we'll be uh, discussing uh, contributions of dr uh, homi jhangir baba dr vikram sarabhai uh, dr m s swaminathan sir m vishweshwaraya uh, then the contributions of satyendranath bose uh, dr a p j abdul kalam so all these different uh, different scientists and their contributions in the uh, science and technology field of India will be discussing. UPC has asked questions on these on this topic in mains exam and the questions are like first how was India benefited from the contributions of Sir M. Vishweshwaraya and Dr. M. S. Swaminathan in the fields of water engineering and agricultural science respectively. So this was the question asked in 2019's mains exam contribution of Dr. M. S. Swaminathan and Sir M. Vishweshwaraya. Next question, uh, discuss the work of Bose-Einstein statistics done by Professor Satendranath Bose and show how it revolutionized the field of physics, right? So this was the question asked by UPC in 2018's mains examination. Next, next topic is issues related to intellectual property rights. What are the issues related to intellectual property rights? So uh, here we'll be discussing about, uh, about intellectual property rights. What are different intellectual property rights and the issues related to those intellectual property rights. And uh, UPC has asked two questions from this particular topic till now. First was asked in 2015 means and the question is India's traditional knowledge digi uh, digital library TKDL which has a database containing formatted information on more than 2 million medicinal formulations is, uh, is proving a powerful weapon in countries fight against erroneous patents. Discuss the pros and cons of making this database publicly available under open source licensing, right? So what are the advantages and disadvantages of TKDL, traditional knowledge digital library? Next, in 2019, they asked question and the question is, how is the government of India protecting traditional knowledge of medicine from patenting by pharmaceutical companies? Right. So this was asked in 2019's mains examination. Right. So that is about the uh, issues related to intellectual properties and also about the discussion of syllabus, decoding of syllabus and different questions asked by UPSC in both prelims and mains examination on uh, topics that they have mentioned under the syllabus of science and technology. Right. So that is about this discussion. Thank you.